within that challenge is a blessing. Yes? Got it? Yes? Okay. So, there's, there's consciousness, which is your awareness, and then there is content in that consciousness. The content in the consciousness are not the same thing. Let me give you an analogy. We have an ocean all across the world. The, 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 the earth is three-fourths water. And the ocean has different names based on what part of the world we're looking at. Pacific Ocean, Atlantic Ocean, Mediterranean. That, that ocean is water. But then there is content in the ocean, there's pollution, there's plastic, there's good stuff too, there's seaweed, there's fish. All of that is called content. It's not the ocean. It's the content in the ocean. Now you are awareness. And then there is content in your awareness. That content can be thoughts, opinions, perspectives, perceptions, points of view. That content can be misguided notions about life. That content could be lies, things you believe that aren't so. That content can be your interpretation of a past event. That content can be resentment, animosity, Unforgiveness, the content could be pollution, and the content could be good stuff. But the content is not awareness. Are you picking up what I'm putting down? Okay. So, as we are awakening, we're able to tell the difference between awareness and content. When we are unaware, we actually believe we are the content. We believe we are those thoughts, those perceptions, those beliefs, those uh, uh, interpretations of things that have happened to us. We think that's who we are. So if someone says to you, who are you? You may start talking about your past. Oh, well, I was born in Seoul, Korea, and then this happened to me, and then I went to that school, and then that happened to me. No, I didn't, I didn't ask you all your content. I asked you who you were. And so the average person thinks they are the content rather than the context, which is consciousness. So on the path to awakening... We do spiritual practices so that we're able to observe the content but not identify with it. We're able to look at the content and little by little by little extract our identification away from the content so that we see that we are not only aware, but we are awareness. We are consciousness. And so with every insight, when we meditate, we have insight. When we pray, we have insight. When we're in our yogic practices, insight can occur. When we are in service to another, we have insight when we're studying, insight. When we're in fellowship and having high conversations, we have insights. What is an insight? An insight is an event that takes place in consciousness, your awareness, where you suddenly or incrementally know something that you formerly just believed. Before you believed it, but you didn't know it. 
But when you have an insight, oh my God, I know this. I've heard it a million times. <clears throat> but now I really see it. I really feel it. So you are here to create a field that allows you to become impervious to the world thought, to establish an intention for awakening, allowing whatever boat you're in, whatever your religion is, to take you to the island of enlightenment, awakening, where the sense of separation between you and the presence dissolves, so that you're increasing and expanding your awareness of reality, reality with a capital R, changeless, timeless, dimensionless, real. Not subject to time or experience so that your consciousness becomes more and more clean you're less and less identified with the stuff in there. You're more and, my, more and more identified with you as awareness and your soul faculty, image and likeness of God, the capacity to think independent of circumstance and to think independent of content liberates you. Moksha, liberation, makes you free. So now you're living from insight after insight after insight, growing, developing, unfolding to your greatest yet to be, your greater yet to be, constantly unfolding. Now here's the deal. This desire to become more yourself or to realize the self, to continue to uh, 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 unfold, continue to participate in your own evolution. That brings about bliss. For whenever there's an insight or an activation of potential, we have states of bliss, because bliss is the function of the activation of potential. So you didn't just arrive here just to get some things in the world. Those are the added things. You've, become to, you've come here to free yourself, to expand your awareness, activate potential, so that the bliss continues to be the activity of your awareness. So you literally not only can be in gratitude and thanksgiving, you can be in high states of joy and bliss, not based on any circumstance whatever, just based on your awareness of your oneness with life itself. Are you vibrationally picking up what I'm putting down here? All right. Do you like what you hear? Somebody said, yes, I do. <laughs> you feel it? Can you feel it? <laughs> because there's an activation going on under my words. The, the, the words are carrying an activation from the moments of expanded awareness. There's a, there's a, there's a feeling, there's an activation that's happening, so I want you to catch it. So let's go back to the beginning. We're creating a field. You've generated blessings for each other. You only get to keep what you give away. That's the law of circulation. You're keeping what you're giving away. You want everyone in here to be healthy and blessed. Everyone in this room to be prosperous. You're eliminating your mind. You're eliminating uh, immature competition with each other. Instead, you're coming into collaboration, communion, and celebration of each other's gifts. For as you celebrate each other, you begin to break the stranglehold 
of the ego's point of view, which only sees lack and limitation and scarcity, and you come into a larger field of oneness and abundance. Oh, it's rich up in here, I'm telling you. So we're creating that field. You're the image and likeness of God. You can think independent of circumstance, and you're coming into a higher and higher states of gratitude, which creates a, I'll slow down, <laughs> which creates a vibrational match with the eternal broadcast that is perpetual in your ability to receive and accept is increasing so that your life becomes on fire with a presence that is never an absence. And you get to create the same way that the presence, the universal mind God creates out of nothing but an idea and a feeling. You get to create. So, gratitude creates a vibrational match. Forgiveness creates a vibrational match. All forgiveness, 100%, all forgiveness is self-forgiveness. Meaning, you are eliminating, dissolving, transmuting the thought forms of resentment, animosity, unforgiveness, hate. Those are thought forms. And if someone has done something to you or said something about you, consciously or unconsciously, and you're holding uh, unforgiveness towards them, where is that unforgiveness? It's not in them. It's in you. Those thought forms are in you. Even though they may, the, the big they may have done something, those thought forms are in you. Which is why I say, all forgiveness is self-forgiveness. You are eliminating those rancid, toxic thoughts from your awareness. So forgiveness is perpetual. It's a, it's a way we live our life so that every day as we're about to retire to sleep, we scan the day and notice are there any minor or major resentments we may be holding? Did anybody get on our nerves? Was there, there something that bothered us? Somebody did something, and are we holding that? We don't want to go to sleep with that. We want to forgive. We want to release. We want to let go. And so there are stages in forgiveness. The first stage is we must be willing to forgive. Oftentimes, we're not willing. We don't want to forgive. We want to hold on. We want to be right. We want to hold on to that resentment because they did it, they said it, and I'm going to hold on to this. And so that unwillingness festers and creates the condition for illness. It creates the condition for blocked opportunities creates the condition for hindering the possibility of unfoldment of our soul. So the first stage of forgiveness is willingness. You have to be willing to forgive. And sometimes when it's really hard, you can say something like, it's so hard for me to forgive. Universe, you do it through me. God, you do it through me. I can't do it. You do it through me. But you just become willing. And once you engage willingness, that's stage one, then you actually go through the process of forgiveness. We're going to do that in a second, but I'm going to explain everything first. You go through a process 
of forgiveness. And you actually see the person in front of you and you let them know with no uncertain terms that what they did or didn't do cannot hinder your destiny. You cut the cord, the emotional cord, and you set them free. You set yourself free, you set them free, and you regain your power. And then, thirdly, you ask to see life from their point of view. That brings about compassion. Sometimes the universe will just show you what made them do what they did, what their limited perception was. And as you see it from their point of view, you have a greater compassion. This is all part of the process. Fourth stage, you wish them well. I know some of you don't want to do it. If you're honest, you don't want to wish anyone well. That has done something to you. But remember, all forgiveness is self-forgiveness. You're doing this for yourself. And then four, fifth one is really big. You actually do something nice for them, but you don't let them know about it. You do it anonymously. So you're setting some energy in motion. You can send them a little letter, you know, send them a, a, a little dollar in the mail or something, just something to get the energy out of you. So here are the five stages of forgiveness. First one, willingness. Second, you go through the process. Third, you s try to see it from their point of view. Fourth, you wish them well. Fifth, you do something nice for them. And that's really tough on the ego. The ego does not want to do it. But you do, right? Right? Do you, do you want to be prosperous? Do you, do you want to be happy? Do you want to be healthy? Do you want to be in joy? You want to be in perpetual bliss and ecstasy? Do you really? Yes? 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 Somebody scream about it. Somebody shout about it. Okay, you have been sitting for a moment. Everybody stand up for a moment. Just stand up and just kind of walk in place a little bit. Just shake your body. Shake. Don't be moody. Shake your booty. Repeat after me. I'm a, I am ready to be happy. I'm available to more joy than I've ever imagined. Just catch it when you can. <laughs> I'm available to more happiness than I've ever imagined. I'm available to more prosperity than I've ever seen. <laughs> I like this, this rolling. <laughs> I'm available to more peace than I've ever experienced. That's good. Somebody scream about it. Put a, sm put a smile on your face. It's called the face asana. Like we have asanas in yoga. It's a face asana. Put a face asana on. Look around the room. Smile at each other. Right now you're producing tom tonic chemicals. When you smile, your immune system is expanding. Tonic chemicals are flowing through the body that's enhancing the immune system and slowing down the aging process. You're stopping time just by smiling. Face asana. Look around the room. Be silly. Smile at each other. Look at somebody and say, you're beautiful. You're magnificent. You're rich. 
You're healthy. You're wealthy. You have such powerful well-being. Now give as many people five as you can. Just give. touch and agree. Here you go. Come here. Just boom. Touch and agree. Touch and agree. Touch and agree. Just touch and agree. You're touching and agreeing. Yes? Yes? Somebody scream. Somebody shout. Somebody jump and shout at the same time. We're getting younger by the second. Younger by the second. Younger. 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 Face asana. Face asana. Younger. 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 Healthier. 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 Wealthier. 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 Well-being. Okay, take a breath. 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 Yes, I am. Yes, I can. Yes, I am willing. And so it is. And so it is. And so it is. All right, you may be seated now. You can, you can applaud yourself. Applaud yourself. <laughs> Breath. So those are five stages of forgiveness. Remember, you do not want to go to bed that night with animosity in your soul. It creates a condition for lower frequencies, lower thought forms that can manifest as disharmony in your life, disease, disruption. You have dominion over your awareness. And so, would you like to go through a forgiveness exercise? Yes? Are you ready to be free? Okay. Put your feet on the ground. Don't cross your legs, just back is straight, erect, but not rigid, You're not tense. Close the outer eye. Think about someone that you need to forgive. Living or dead. Someone that when you think about, when someone mentions their name, you kind of cringe, you kind of contract your energy because of what they said about you or what they did to you. Think about them. We enter into stage one right now. I want you to become willing to forgive them. As you are becoming willing to forgive them, you are not condoning what they did or said. You're simply transmuting the thought forms in your consciousness to a higher frequency. Remember, you are awareness and you have content that content might be unforgiveness, which is creating a barrier preventing you from seeing reality. You're only seeing your own thoughts about reality. So right now, just come into willingness and think about 
any time in your life where you felt the feeling of willingness, you became willing to do something new. You became willing to grow. You became willing to try something you've never tried before. Consider the feeling of willingness. I want you to inhale a large breath right now. Breathe in. Breathe in and hold the breath. But feel willingness. Let willingness expand. You're willing to forgive. Release the breath with the sound of ah. <sighs> yes. So you're feeling willingness. Now, think about the person you want to forgive. Imagine that they are sitting in a chair right across from you. You're sitting in a chair. They are sitting in a chair in front of you. You can see them. In your willingness to forgive, I want you to look at them and, and say mentally, what you did does not determine my destiny. Say to them, what you did does not determine my happiness. What you did or did not do does not control my destiny at all. I am free. And see yourself with some very special spiritual scissors in your hand and begin to cut the cord between you and that person. And as you're cutting the cord, you are saying, I forgive you and I set you free. I forgive you and I set myself free. As I cut these cords, I forgive myself for any way that I participated in this circumstance. I forgive you and set you free. You, that experience cannot determine my destiny. That experience cannot determine my happiness, my health, my success, or my well-being. I am free. I am free to prosper. I am free to be happy and healthy. And I set you free. Now, as you are sitting in this feeling tone of forgiveness, open yourself up and simply ask to see 
or to feel their point of view. You're not here to agree with the point of view, you're just here to see it if you can. Why would they say such a thing? Why would they do such a thing? Was it out of fear? Control? Was their ego dominating their attention? You're just asking to see from their point of view. If you can see from their point of view, sometimes it'll be the birth of compassion. You could have a comp compassion on someone that was operating from ignorance, from separation, from competition, from lack. Fourth stage, to the best of your ability, consciously from your heart, Wish them well. Set them free with a desire that they find happiness. With the desire that they find peace. With the desire that they find and discover and experience love health and prosperity, just wish them well. Remember the sacred universal law. You get to keep what you give away. It is a return to cinder universe. Everything that you send out is marked return to sender. The energy that you put out must come back home. So even though this individual may have consciously or unconsciously hurt you, you're freeing yourself by wishing them well you hope they find peace. Fifth stage. What is one sweet thing that you could possibly do for them anonymously? You can pray for them. You can drop an anonymous note in the mail telling them that they are a child of the universe and you hope that their life turns out beautiful. You let your mind just run wild if you want to play at this level. And if you do, make a commitment to wish them well and to do something for them anonymously just to free yourself from the constraints of negative energy. Stages again, first stage, willingness. If there's willingness, there's a way. If there's willfulness, there's a wall. Second stage, you actually practice forgiveness. You slip into this third, third stage by perhaps catching an insight as to how they see the world. What's their perspective? 
You don't have to agree with it, you're just seeing it. Fourth stage, you're wishing them well. Fifth stage, if you're willing, you find some little bit of kindness that you can do for them without them knowing. So that you free yourself from lower frequencies. So that you are becoming a vibrational match to the eternal presence that is always giving of itself totally and completely. And we are growing in graciousness, increasing our ability to receive and accept the eternal gift. Gratitude and forgiveness. Gratefulness and forgiveness. Thankfulness and forgiveness. And we begin to create the same way God creates as the image and likeness of God. thinking independent of a circumstance and creating out of nothing but an idea and a feeling. Oh, how powerful you are. How magnificent you are. Less and less identifying with the content of your consciousness And more and more identifying with yourself as pure awareness. Unsullied by time or experience. Unhindered by condition. Pure consciousness. And your body and your mind become instruments delivery systems for the divine flow and harmony and prosperity and health and creativity wisdom and guidance direction begin to flow through you unencumberedly even now. Receive a deep breath right now. Breathe in. Sustain the breath. Hold it. All together now release with the sound of ah. ah. Slowly open your eyes and begin to feel more and more your expanded nature as you are clearing out the thought forms that do not serve you. Thought forms of resentment and animosity which continues to attract those, that same frequency. You want to be at a high level of vibration so that the birds of a feather that flock together are high inspired thoughts from the infinite. Spontaneous goodness. Inspiration. New ideas. But you must be clean and clear. 
You must enter, enter into a continued, expanded, liberated state. How are you feeling? Shout it out. How are you feeling on this side? Good? Center? Side? All together? Life is good? The truth is, life is good. Our experience of life may be different from life. Life is good. It never compromises its nature, never changes. It's good beyond human concept of good. Our experience of life is limited. Our perception shrinks, and we only experience a little bit of life. When life, the presence, wants to shine through you. It wants to come into its own as you. Every being in this room is an on purpose with a purpose. There are no accidents here. I don't care what your parents said. You're not accidental. You're on purpose. Unique, unrepeatable. You will never be repeated. And the universe is up to producing an individual that can perfectly reflect the cosmos. That would be you. Look at your neighbor and say, that's you. Translation. Now. <laughs> Look to your neighbor and say, it's you. Look to the neighbor and say, tag, you're it. Yeah, that's it. Tag, you're it. You know what that means? The, the presence has given you everything. And through its laws, it's saying, tag, you're it. It's up to you now. It's up to you. It's up to you. How do we become liberated? We have to live in a perpetual state of inquiry using the right questions. Let me break this down for you. 